welcome back to another session of the Hoppery. My name is Mark Starr and tonight I'm going to share a pretty good triple with you. So now I've had you know quite a few triples. I think it's somewhat of a popular style of beer. Uh, a lot of people you know talk about triples and doubles and why do they call them double? Why do they call them triple? Well the, the simple way is to say you know in the old days when they would make a beer with malt that had X amount of malt in it um, they may double that amount in a beer and then it would be called a double. If you triple the amount of malt, it would be called a triple. Um, and, and along with that typically comes a stronger, uh, a stronger beer. In this case, uh, the Red Hook Triple here, this one clocks in right about 10%, 10.2%. So you can see it's a quite a bit stronger beer than um, you know, your normal, uh, just regular Belgian L. Um, so this one comes from Red Hook. Again, it's uh, part of their limited release, and you'll know that because it says it here on the bottle two or three times. But um, again, this is a Belgian-style triple. Um, the thing that's so interesting to me about Red Hook is that they are a brewery that actually have multiple locations. In fact, I think there's um, you know maybe two or three. They do point out a couple of them here on the bottle. There's one in Woodenville, Washington and then also in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. So you can see they've got business on the East Coast and the West Coast. So um, anyway, I thought I'd share this triple with you tonight. Um, not long ago, I was actually able to get the Red Hook Limited um, glass that came along with uh, the release of this beer. And so I've had this one sitting in my fridge for you know a month, month and a half, and I thought, you know what? Let's go ahead and knock it out the box tonight. So. Uh, before we get started, I did want to take you know half a minute uh, just to kind of show you a trick on opening these beers when you want to save the caps. Now I know a lot of people will use the quarter trick. Hey, you know what? That works fine. If it works for you, that's awesome. Uh, one trick though that I have um, recently started to use, and it's a little bit harder than the quarter trick. I'll be honest with you. But if you have just a normal ring, in my case, I have a wedding ring, but. Um, you can use this ring to help pry open the beer, and I found that when you use a ring like this, it virtually leaves the, the cap spotless. So I'm going to show you. Now, it's not always easy, so if I sit here and I grunt and groan and I pry and pry and pry, hey, you know what? I'm human. So uh, let me go ahead and use my remote here, and I am going to try to zoom in for a second so that I can show you this. So basically what you do is you take your ring and you hook it up underneath the actual cap and you just let your finger drape over the top. Now it takes a lot of pressure. <sighs> Look at that. It's like I'm the Hulk. Um, but I'll go ahead and zoom out here again. Sorry about that. Just wanted to give you a, a quick view of how that's done. Um, but actually this cap right now literally looks like it's been untouched. So. Um, you know, when I have special beers like this, I certainly like to save the caps, as I know a lot of you do as well. So let's go ahead and get this thing started and uh, see what we get. All right. So it is a triple. Um, you know, triples traditionally have a lighter color, which this one most certainly does. Uh, in fact, this thing is, I mean, it's virtually clear. It's really nice. And those bubbles from the effervescence are just screaming their way up to the top. Um, you know, I've, I've described it this way before in other beers, but it truly looks like a champagne um, or some sort of cider beer. I mean, this is really, I mean, you've got to, you know, you probably see that color from there. It's, it's virtually clear. So, um, not an insane amount of head on there, and what I am getting is really kind of um, soapy, uh, meaning that it's not really tight, uh, it, it literally looks like dish soap that you've, you know, kind of agitated in uh, the water here. But I'm going to go ahead and put my nose in here and see what we get. So right off the bat, this has got a really nice floral component. Um, I get the Belgian yeast in there. Not a whole lot. Um, it's actually really nice and subtle. Um, I do get some spice. I definitely get the clove, um, and I get the clove component that uh, would normally be associated with the banana bread clove, though I would say that the banana bread piece of that uh, is virtually non-existent, though I'm used to smelling it with that, so perhaps that's why it's in my head, but 
This actually smells a lot like the Triple Carmelite. Um, there's a little bit of vanilla in here as well, some vanilla, um, like I said, some clove, um, some white flowers. I'm actually liking the way this one smells. If it smells like it tastes, I think it's probably going to be pretty good. So let's go ahead and see what it's got. So immediately, um, I got to tell you, it falls kind of flat on my palate. Um, it's got a really nice flavor, you know, right on the front. You know, as soon as you taste it, you really get those flavors. By the time it goes down your tongue and, you know, down your throat, not a whole lot is left. Um, hmm. I will tell you that the, um, the, the bitterness on this one is, is uh, probably one of the uh, nicer amounts of bitterness. Like it's just enough, um, you know, to kind of hit your tongue and leave those flavors behind. But again, I think once it really goes past that, um, it, it doesn't really leave um, a very long finish. Mm. There's a slight alcohol burn. I mean, it's not, it's not, you know, it's not hurting me or anything. 10.2%, uh, you know, you should probably taste a little bit of alcohol in there. Um, for the most part, though, Getting a lot of those vanilla and spice uh, components on there. So yeah, it's, um, you know, I would say that this is very decent. Really love the color. I mean, they have nailed the color. I think they've done an exceptional job on the aroma. Hell, it even tastes pretty good. Um, you know, I, I think really at the end of the day, though, it's, it's not, you know, kind of um, sticking to my mouth and, you know, leaving that lasting impression uh, like I would like to see from a beer of this caliber. And I'm taking a breath in every time I take a sip of that. And i got to be honest, the nose on this one is, I mean, it's just gorgeous, you know. It's very subtle. Like, you don't want a beer that just, you know... It rips your nose hairs out, but you want to be able to smell it too. And, you know, one of my favorite things to do in drinking a beer is to spend the time, you know, swirling the glass, smelling it. So I'm just going to say right now that I think the nose on this is probably the, the best thing about it, followed by the, uh, the, the clarity. I mean, I, I honestly, I, I don't think I've ever seen a beer that clear. And that's gorgeous. Um, so anyway, well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, sit here and relax and, you know, take a little bit of time to drink the rest of this beer. But, you know, if you're following me on Twitter, you can go to twitter.com backslash the hoppery. You know, always go to my website. I know a lot of you guys are watching my videos on YouTube. I appreciate that greatly. Um, if I can, I really would like you to go to my website. You know, leave some comments on my website. I really kind of want to get some dialogue going. Uh, that's www.thehoppery.com. I will always try to answer every question you have, reply to every comment you make. Um, but, you know, really come and check my website out. That's where, you know, I'm going to, you know, be posting a lot more information than just the video. I also share with you what music I've been listening to lately. I'll point out where you can get these beers, um, you know, like what states they're available in, and, you know, link you to other beers that I may reference, and also show you, you know, what are the, what, are, what is Rate Beer's top 50 rated beers of this style. So, anyway, thanks for coming back, guys. My name is Mark Starr, and we'll see you later.